The tester metal update is now live and running, but this patch release didn't go exactly as intended, as an array of new issues emerged almost immediately. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Patch 35 or the Tester Metal update went live yesterday, June 14, and unfortunately things didn't go so well, starting by the extended maintenance times and ending with lots of new issues currently still being reported by players. Anyway, in this video I bring you news on several hot topics, such as the free ranks from the Steam migration, the new Fallout First perks, and some new stuff I discovered along the way in the past 24 hours, like how broken the new Meyer Moonshine drink is, as well as major bugs affecting the Moonshine Jamboree event. In fact, all the events like Scorch Earth seems to be working in strange ways when it comes to rewards. To finish off, I will show you some clips about the upcoming second mission for the pit. Alright then, let's get into the details now. Update 35 has been live on the public test servers for months now, but that didn't prevent a disastrous release which took place yesterday, June 14. Now, servers went down for maintenance around 10 a.m. ET time as scheduled, but it didn't take long until Bethesda realized something was not right. After a couple of hours of downtime, the community manager Volsig started to post updates on the state of the patch release, and as shown, we ended up with a wall of updates on update 35 alone, which, to be honest, didn't say much. Basically, the public posts stated two things. One, the maintenance was taking longer than expected, and two, something went terribly wrong, but no reasons or explanations were provided. In fact, while players discussed the recent events in Bethesda's official Discord, I spotted this post from Valsik, where he states the team came across a few internal hiccups, which required a fix before the update went live. Anyway, it took them about six hours to tackle things down and reopen the servers, but not without a storm heading their way, literally. As soon as the patch went live, reports started emerging all over social media, from new bugs to game crashes or even FPS drops. However, the main concern was the Atomic Shop, since it was down and unresponsive for most players when the servers went back up. Let's talk about that now. Right after Update 35 went live, the Atomic Shop struggled to follow. For many players, the in-game shop was down and or inaccessible for a while. For some, the Atom's count wasn't even working, and there were multiple reports on how the Fallout First perks were disabled. The problem was so severe that it forced Bethesda to act quickly. They made yet another announcement about investigating the reports, and within the hour they issued a fix and restored the Atomic Shop back to normal. Well, as normal as it could be at the time, really. On my end, I was not able to access the shop for a while, at least half an hour, and even after the fix arrived, I had issues loading in, as you can see. My pages looked like this, entries, images, prices, and all of that could not load. Well, in the interface did. It's a pretty weird one. The good news is that today things seem to be fixed and back to normal, so let's hope it stays that way. The next point is about something important regarding the new events, you might have missed it if you did not go through the entire patch notes. Until June 28, the new public events Eviction Notice, Moonshine Jamboree and Tester Metal are getting a special spawn rule. What does that mean? Well, listen up. At every fixed hour the pool only fetches from these three, which means one of them will spawn always. For the other two spawns at minute 20 and 40, any public event can spawn, including the new ones, of course. But as they created this exceptional rule to ensure players get more opportunities to experience and farm the new content with such events. Otherwise, it would be quite challenging and silly, since the public events pool is quite extensive and diluted at this point. So thumbs up to Bethesda for doing this. If you are looking to farm the new free rewards, there are almost 30 in total. You can check them out here in this other video, by the way, if you haven't yet. But if that's the case, then make sure to log in and farm as much as possible until June 28. After that, the public event spawn system will go back to normal and farming the new events will become way more difficult. Almost impossible, because there's so many and RNG, you know how it works. 
Alright, the Fallout First membership got a huge boost with this update as previously announced by Bethesda, but now we can actually see the changes in game. There are three main new perks for Fallout First and Bethesda is calling them enhancements. Anyway, the most noticeable new perk is the bonus rewards for Seasons, which is now offering like 10 times more rewards than before. Just look at that. Every 2-3 ranks, there is a new Fallout First reward. It's pretty insane and some people are even calling it pay to win. Is it now? Maybe it's getting a bit out of hand. However, most of these new rewards are just consumables or reskins, so don't expect a lot of new original stuff, at least not for Season 9. I'm showing all the Fallout First rewards here for this season in the footage, of course, so feel free to pay attention to it if that's of your interest. Moving forward, the second new perk is a brand new one. Now first members can access score boosts. This is also unlockable from Seasons. There are currently three boosts, one of 5% and two of 10% each, and they do stack. In total, you can unlock a 25% score boost for the rest of the season once you unlock the last buff. It's handy to have, especially to farm for repeatable rewards later on. Lastly, Bethesda added bonus score challenges exclusively for first members. It seems to be one extra per day right now, and it can alternate between a daily or a weekly according to the patch notes. Lastly, I spotted a change you should know about. Bethesda added two claim keys now, one for normal rewards. The default key is the same old, enter on PC. But for first rewards, they added a new claim key. The default is T as shown for PC, but it doesn't always work. In this clip I was spamming T, but it never claimed the respective reward, as you can see, it stayed there forever and ever. Restarting the scoreboard though does solve the bug, so remember that. As a last note, don't miss out on what's yours, it's easy to skip these new rewards if you are not sure or aware of what's going on. Talking about what's yours, Bethesda's initial plan for the free rank rewards from the Steam migration process was to release them with Update 35 right from the beginning. But since things went south, the free ranks are not live yet. Well, for most players at least. In a recent post from June 14, the community manager Volseek reassured that the free ranks are still on the way and should be rewarded within a couple of days. He also explained the rewards are being processed in batches, so players will naturally get them at different times. It's also confirmed that the rollout started yesterday, June 14, so expect the free ranks to show up in your scoreboard at any time now. And no, there is no player action required. Everything is or should be automatic. So if you were illegible and migrated early to Steam and you don't receive anything in the next few days, I strongly recommend you to get in touch with the customer support team. The next news is actually a really good thing and something some of you guys have been requesting for a very long time. I'm talking about the vendor inspect option. Yep, this seems to be live now and it's a stealthy change. I couldn't find it anywhere in the patch notes. Maybe I'm a little bit blind. Hmm, maybe not. But you can now inspect all items tagged for sale from player vendors. From what I tested, the inspect option is working consistently for any item really. So you can now say farewell to the old ways where you could end up buying the wrong items just because you could not inspect them and see what you want to see. This often happened with gear where players could not check all the legendary effects or equipped mods. They actually had to buy them first in order to inspect and now it's the opposite so thumbs up to Bethesda again for this one. Alright, the next news is something I discovered by chance really and it's a big one. One of the new free items live with update 35 is the Meyer Magic Moonshine and just like the name says, it's a magic item. No seriously, it's so bugged that you can hardly believe it. To make it simple, both drinks, the normal and vintage, are supposed to boost the new weapon's damage equal per smacker by 50 and 100% respectively, however this effect is not unique to the weapon as it should be. It actually boosts damage for all melee weapons belonging to the two-hand category. 
I told you, the magic levels are superb here. How do I know this? Well, I compared my damage with and without the effect, and I even did a few damage tests to ensure these damage values are not just a visual bug. It's not, by the way. But as shown here, whenever I used the Vintage Mire Moonshine, my two-hand melee weapons got boosted too. I used the Bloodied Gulper Smucker, Baseball Bat, Super Sledge, and War Glaive for comparison purposes, and everything gets boosted since they are two hands. One hand does not get affected though. I also tested on super mutants and when I drank the moonshine, my inflicted damage was much superior as you can see. With the war glaive I went from 400 to 500 damage per hit with no buffs to steady 500 to almost 600 per hit. The damage boost is very noticeable, so it's hard to deny it's not working, because it is. Now, you might be wondering, why is this drink behaving this way? Well, I asked the data miner Maddock Rod to investigate the case, and after checking the files, he concluded that the devs responsible for this drink forgot to add a piece of code. Instead of restricting the drink's effect to the gulper smacker, as the description says, they attach it to the two-hand melee category. So that's what's happening, and it explains why it's behaving the way it is. So enjoy the OP drink with extra damage for two-hand melee weapons, all of them, but don't get too cozy, because this should be easy to fix. Should, because with Bethesda, you never know. Now let's go over some major issues with the Moonshine Jamboree event. If you have done it a few times, you probably noticed that regardless of meeting all the objectives, the event can still fail and leave everyone confused about what the heck just happened. And that's not necessarily because you guys did something wrong, it's because of this heavy bug which does not update the delivered Venom as it should be. In this case, we collected 60, but the system got stuck on 30, so it said 60 out of 30. Obviously, it only come to 30 because that was the max, and that's how the computer language works. And we failed despite doing everything right. Because to succeed, one of the requirements is 60 delivered venoms. Uh, okay then. It's a really frustrating bug, and it will turn Moonshine Jamboree into an event nobody wants to do once the hype is over, and if Bethesda does not fix it, of course. The second major bug I encountered is about enemy spawns. Each destiler has a spawning area for enemies, quite far into the swamp, but but enemies often get stuck at the spawn area and do not come to the event itself, so if you are barely seeing enemies or none at all, that's what's happening, basically. In crowded events, you might not notice this bug since players scatter around and defend all sides, but when you are low in numbers, it's a true challenge to cover so much space. Now, if players want to collect Venom to meet the event objectives, they are forced to go to the stuck enemies and travel some really long distances, which compromises the defense of the Distylers. It's not very fun, and it's another reason not to bother with this event on the long run, especially when all your efforts can go into waste with the first bug. As such, Bethesda really has to solve these bugs if they want this event to survive. On the topic of bugged events with update 35, something seems to have changed for some event rewards. I woke up this morning to multiple reports about how Scorch Earth is now no longer giving any rewards. So I decided to test, and yes, it's true, sadly. Even if you deal lots of damage to the queen, it doesn't matter, it will not change the rewards. You still get loot from the body when you kill it, but the event rewards are missing. Now, I cannot confirm this is a global bug, as in it's affecting everyone, I think it's not, but it's surely affecting many players, judging by how many reports I saw on social media so far. If you are not being affected, good for you, but that doesn't mean the bug doesn't exist. Lastly, DDT Gaming hinted that more event rewards might not be worth working as intended. So perhaps this issue goes way beyond Scorch Earth. I need to test further to understand what's really going on. As for the last point, I decided to cover some exciting news about the next patch, The Pit. On June 12, during the Bethesda and Xbox Games Showcase, the companies released a new trailer for The Pit Expeditions. The link is right below the video in case you want to watch it in full. And surprisingly, they added footage from the second mission too, which is not yet live for testing on the PTS. It seems like Bethesda has been working on other districts of Pittsburgh, such as another industrial area, a huge raider's compound, 
and underground tunnels or sewers filled with drugs as seen in this part of the clip. There's even some sort of ritual cultist room. It's looking promising and very, very mysterious. Moreover, I found this event asset for the pit missions that are mined by Saturnite, which features Hex, a major NPC for the first mission, and an unknown female Brotherhood of Steel member. So it seems like there will be a twist to the pit expeditions with the second mission. I cannot wait to try it out in the next weeks. Hopefully. Well, we are about done with another round of 76 news and today's random bug is this possessed arm or leg, I'm not entirely sure what it is, since it's sink deep inside the map and bugged itself, perfectly in sync to the Jamboree's music. I had a nice laugh here when I first saw it. The gems of 76 can be priceless sometimes. Check it out. Anyway, that's everything for now. If you would like to share any news or stealthy changes with this patch, feel free to leave a comment below or join my Discord to share it there. The link is always in the description box. Now it's time to wrap things up. I am Marta Branco. Thanks for watching. A huge thanks to all my dear supporters. Consider subscribing to help the channel out. And I will see you very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.